Hi, welcome to TC Weekly Live. We're your hosts. I'm Kiana. And I'm Cody. For today's usual broadcast, we've got the news, Nerado, something about music, and some lovely folks cooking up some food, and Brian's The Zombie Show. As always, Cody, that's quite the lineup tonight. Let's roll with the first, <laughs> let's roll with the news first, shall we? You've read my mind, you mind reader. <laughs> you with all your mind reading stuff and such. You know, back in the day, they'd call you a witch and have the village after you. Dude, chill on the witch talk. Let's hear what's going on around the world. 2020 has been one hell of a year. With all this COVID-19 talk, all there really is to do is hang outside. Even got my mask. With all of the protests and riots and everything else that's going on, we figured we'd share a more positive side of the news. Every episode, we plan on sharing videos that give a lighter side of the news. Hello, would you like some pizza? Derling knew we would like to deliver you some. An employee for Papa John's, this man is 89 years old. One TikTok family decided to go out of their way and ask for donations from anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar to give this man. They raised over $12,000 and on his next visit, this man got over a $12,000 tip. The generosity of this family and all the hard work that this man does is just an incredible feat. You know, it's kind of incredible that the, the guy's 89 years old and that he's still working, um, especially as a pizza delivery uh, person. It, that, that's a lot of driving and moving around. So it's kind of an incredible story. Um, I hear you're talking about the Packers. So uh, what have the Packers been up to lately? Well, Dex, I'm glad you mentioned the Packers because uh, today on our show, uh, we have a special, special guest, number four, Brett Favre. Say hi, Brett. Now, I have a few questions for you, Brett. Uh, do we defeat the Vikings? That's right, two-headed uh, Viking pack of dragon. Yeah, we did. Knocked them out of the ballpark. Do we defeat the Lions? You gosh darn right we did. And finally, do you think that we are going to the Super Bowl. Good answer, Brett. Good answer. I appreciate you coming to the show. We will talk to you later. All right, guys, that draws the conclusion to the positive side of current news. Um, I'd like to thank Brett Favre for stopping by, giving his opinion on everything. Um, football season's upon us, you know. Got two under our belt already, hopefully more. 89-year-old pizza delivery driver. You know, gets a $12,000 tip. I wish. <laughs> but, uh, so we're going to hand hand the mic over to Dexter and see what he found for us in the past. On this day in history, September 28th, 1976, Stevie Wonder released a double album titled Songs in the Key of Life. This album was the first to be released after Wonder had considered ending his musical career to emigrate to Ghana and to work with handicapped children in 1975. Songs in the Key of Life debuted at number one on the Billboard Pop Albums chart, making Wonder the first American artist to achieve this feat, as well as making his album only the third in history to top the chart. Songs in the Key of Life won Album of the Year at the 19th Grammy Awards and was the best-selling and the most critically acclaimed album of Wonder's career often considered as the greatest album of all time by other notable musicians. 92 years ago today, in 1928, Sir Alexander Fleming had accidentally changed the course of medicine. After a vacation, Fleming returned to a laboratory that he had previously left as a mess, and found that a mold had killed the Staphylococci culture that was left in a petri dish. This bacteria-killing mold that grew in his lab would later on become the world's first antibiotic, known as penicillin. When Fleming had first published his discovery the following year, it had hardly received any attention. Later on, however, his discovery had won him the Nobel Prize for Physiology, as well as many other awards. On this day in history, September 29th, 1996. A personal favorite of mine, codename Project Reality, also known as the Nintendo 64 gaming console, was released in North America three months after its release in Japan. The N64 was a fifth-generation console developed by Nintendo 
to take the place of the Super Nintendo. The console was home to the best-selling platformer, Super Mario 64, which was the first open-world game in the Super Mario series, and it was also the first in the series to feature 3D gameplay. The Nintendo 64 had nearly 33 million purchases at the time, and was the last major home console to use the ROM cartridge as its primary storage format, until the Nintendo Switch, which was released in 2017. The N64 was discontinued in 2002, when its successor, the GameCube, was released. And lastly in 1954, The Catch by Willie Mays. The New York Giants center fielder made what is regarded as the greatest catch ever made in the history of baseball. With his back turned to home plate, he chased after a ball hit by a Cleveland Indians player in the first game of the World Series. Anyways guys, that is all we have for you today on this episode of Choose Your News. As always, come back next week for a better side of the news. Huh, didn't know that was a thing. What thing? Dude, you weren't even paying attention. You just sat there and stared at the floor guy with cold eyes. Oh, Kiana, such a comedian. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, next up is Nerado. Let's check out what Sam has for us. Let's hope he keeps us entertained or, you know... Sam, you know what will happen. Dude, you can't threaten another student. Why do video game movies suck? Honestly, there hasn't been a single video game movie that is an absolute beast of a film. Typically, every video game movie is either a fun little romp to watch with your friends, or the movies are just awful. And trust me, majority of these movies are just awful. My name's Sam, and welcome to Nerado, where I'll rant about my opinions on storytelling elements in TV shows, games, movies, and even anime. Today, I'm going to be going over why I think video game movies often suck. Video games, you love them, and you love to play them or watch them. Over the years, the idea of turning a video game into a movie is such a crazy idea. On paper, it sounds simple. Take all the story cutscenes and gameplay and just transfer that to film. Easy to do, sure. Majority of storyboarding, script work, and soundtrack, and maybe even casting is already done for you. But all this has a catch. Not only do you have to work with producers who possibly never played said game, who have a say with what happens in the movie, you have to be able to pitch it to someone. And you have to be able to afford the game's licensing slash IP, which can cost you millions. So, why do these movies suck? Well, to be honest, it's the people that have been handling them now and the people that have handled them in the past. Those guys ruined it for us. So, because of that, video game movies are stuck in a perpetual loop of never-ending garbage. Ever heard of Uwe Boll, famous German director of the cult classic films such as House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain, In the Name of the King, Postal, and Far Cry? No? I wonder why. Uwe Boll is truly responsible for the reputation that video game movies have. He has single-handedly created movie bomb after bomb, and he has ruined the chances of any actual good video game movie to be made. I'm not joking. All these movies are just an awful mess. Their stories are so basic and by the books and lazily shot. The acting is so completely stiff and awful that it's not even funny to watch. Okay, but the reason why I include Mr. Bull or Bull's ethnicity is because in Germany, tax laws are a little odd or a little loosey-goosey. Alright, let's just say that they're very easy to exploit when it comes to tax loopholes. Let's just say Mr. Bull or Bull can make these awful movies and get 100% tax deductible from it. In Germany, if anyone invests any kind of money into said movie, they only pay taxes on the returns from that movie. This is where things get muddy. Check this out, lads. All Mr. Bull or Bull has to do is ask for more money than he actually needs to make the movie. He makes the movie cheaper, have it flop for obvious reasons, and anyone who had invested said money won't have to pay any taxes on it because the movie isn't making enough money for the government to chime in. Clever, but totally illegal. Since Mr. Bull's movies are based on smaller games, their licenses slash IPs shouldn't be as expensive as more popular games like GTA or Halo. Casting is going to be pretty simple since you can pick up most B-list actors and probably pick up some college interns to whip up a lazy script and boom profit the byproduct of mr bull's actions has ruined the chances for more video game movies to be made in some cases video game movies have changed a few details from the original work for some reasons often in hopes to better the original source material let me tell you that the doom movies have been beaten over the head with this Doom 2005 and Doom Annihilation completely steer away from Doom's quote-unquote plot. Do you happen to know Doom's plot? How about I refresh your memory? It's about a guy who lost his pet bunny Daisy to some demons, and now he's killing every demon in his path. 
sprinkle some cult worship plot here and there and hell on Mars and Earth and boom, that's Doom. What do these movies do? Well, Doom 2005 is on Mars with Martians that have a gene that would give them superpowers and depending on if they were a good guy or not would either turn them into an abomination or just look normal but have powers. Kind of lame. But it did use the models of the demons from Doom 3 and had a pretty rad POV segment where you watch Reaper, the Doom guy, kill monsters. Doom Annihilation, on the other hand, only has name drops from the game going for it. That movie was made on such a shoestring budget. The uniforms the soldiers wear look like a bunch of kids ready to go airsofting. Hot take though, I'm a little annoyed with some decisions with this movie. Doom Annihilation's Doom guy is the ever so charming Joan d'Arc, a hardened soldier with PTSD or something, I don't know. But come on man, it's, it's Doom guy, you know? There isn't anything wrong with a strong female protagonist. I personally love Samus Ridley and The Bride and Sarah Connor, who are incredible characters. But for Doom Annihilation's sake, changing an already established character didn't help them out. Doubling down on their decision didn't help either. But props for confidence. Listen. If you wanted to make a movie with one tough SOB female lead, why not make a new original story? Food for thought? Don't make her the Doom guy, rather someone who fights alongside with them. Keep her as the lead and have the Doom guy be the side man. Like, come on man, it's not that hard. It's a game about some roided dude killing demons, and the fans wanted to see that. But more powerful people make these decisions, and all I can do is just complain. But I complain for good reason though. The odds of another Doom movie being made is slim. Because not only is id Software going to hold on tight to their IP, producers are not going to be willing to fund another Doom movie. You know what they see? They see two flops and don't care how those movies didn't represent the franchise properly. The few video game movies that were okay were like Silent Hill 1, Mortal Kombat, Tron, and Sonic. But those were okay. They still passed the class, but with a D. What sucks about video game movies is they either get the source material wrong, or are poorly slapped together they just fall apart. Or sometimes they get used for tax fraud. Fun fact, Uwe Boll challenges his critics in boxing matches. Why? I don't know. The guy just likes knocking heads around, I guess. Video game movies are just a nightmare. They've all gained this reputation that these are just straight to DVD flicks with no effort put in them. Sadly, it seems that no one wants to or can fix that. The problem is the people who are handling them now, or have handled them in the past, have set that reputation and continue to support the notion that those movies are just awful. But there is hope. Rumors have it that Nintendo is working on some new movies for us, so cheers on that. But do you know why it took so long for Nintendo to approve a Pokemon movie? Because of the directors Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel couldn't stop arguing on the set of the Super Mario Bros. movie. I'm not kidding. That movie is so bad. Those two made such a god-awful film that Nintendo went, yeah, no, that's that's not gonna happen again. Seriously, those two actually hired strippers to fill in a club set of some kind. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Enough about that, though. Those are my thoughts on why video game movies often suck. As always, Sam, oh, as always, Sam knows how to keep us engaged. Good job, bud. Stop. <laughs> All right, folks. Next up is the cooking show. Let's see what they got going on in the kitchen. I'm going to pretend you just avoided that. But yeah, let's see what's going on. What you'll need for the sauce is tomato paste, tomato sauce, oregano, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, garlic salt, and pepper.
oven for 10 minutes. You're gonna put it in the oven for 10 minutes because it's your oven. <laughs> While you're stern above it, it's gonna get trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the oven, we've waited a little bit if it's, it's cool down, and now we're gonna try it. Not bad at all if I uh, do say so myself. Right, as always, Kiana. Let's hope next time they fulfill their promise and bring that food for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. They only cook for like three people. I think it's a little out of their budget to compensate for the rest of us. Funny as always, but not as funny as our sponsors. Wait, we have a sponsor? Since when? Kiana, you joker. All right, folks, let's hear it from our sponsors. My name's Sam. You might recognize me from my cult classic show, Murano. And you might be curious, how do I use copyrighted material in my videos? <laughs> well, it's pretty easy. For $9.99 a week, I can teach you how to make copyright bots go crazy. It's pretty easy, actually. Check this out. Take any song you want, throw in my lovely filter over it, and the bots won't even know what If you like stealing material, well, I'm your guide. You can call me at whatever you want, I don't know. Uh, tell me where you live, your social security number, how many windows you have in your house, and I'll stop by and teach you how to do this, okay? Hi. <laughs> okay. Well, ooh. That. Huh. I might have to hit up that Sam fellow. And what? Steal content? Kiana at it again. Alright folks, let's next up is something about music. Well, I guess. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to Something About Music, the show where we take sounds from everyday things and environments and process it into music. Today we are going to be focusing on vocal sounds. Now it's time to start processing. Okay, so we're in the project file and I'm gonna play through the sounds that I made with the samples, which is mostly just the drums again. And I'll play it without them with it and I'll slowly add on to show you what I did. Okay. So let's add an EQ, the EQ that I added right here. Kinda, it's kinda getting there. And I added a saturator to sort it. And then another EQ, which this time is more shaping the sound versus 
just like uh, Marvel Sword. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't know. And then this is here to just make sure that it's mono, so it's actually hitting more towards the middle of the track than if I. Oh, and I have to, I have to go on the main thing. Yeah, you can't really tell the difference, but it helps for the snares. So we'll play it with and without again. Pretty big difference. And then I'll play the snare. I have that. And then that one, which... Let me see if I can get it. Oh yeah, it's just the k k k so. Oh yeah, I'm pitched up. And... Yeah, there's not much to this. Just mainly getting it to blend with each other, which I think I did. And in the end, the drum beat sounds like this. And we got the hi-hats. And yeah, otherwise, I mean, I can go up here actually and show you. This is actually a free plugin, pretty good bass guitar plugin. Uh, massive, it's an E piano, or a Rhodes, I don't know. I have something down here that is called stutter edit, isotope stutter edit, and it kind of gives it Oh no, I don't have it applied to that one. And then I have a piano up here. And then like a little vocal chop. Otherwise, there's not too much to the project. And yeah. Quite the banger, huh, Cody? Yeah, yeah, it was. Cody, whatever bit you're doing, it has to stop. You're freaking everyone out, man. About half the crew left the studio already. That's right, Kiana. Next up is Bri Brian's <laughs> The Zombie Show. Last time he showed us behind the current currents of his production, which I thought was really interesting. Hopefully today's episode lives up to the hype.
behind the scenes part two. So open up Blender, delete that default cube, make a plane, extrude that, extrude that, inset that, and you get this cheap looking warehouse. It's cheap, but it does the job. But if you ever wanted a better one, you could always go to Turbo Square Sketchfab. They've got tons and tons of models here from millions of creators worldwide, which is pretty awesome. Then go back to your scene, set up a cheap lighting setup, rotate that on a bit, and then it looks all right. Then make a camera, animate that camera, add some noise. So it looks like you're actually holding the camera. And then once you're all done, render it out. You would think you want to render it out as a QuickTime or AVI or H.264 codec, but actually you don't want to because if, if, if it ever were to fail halfway, you'd have to start from the very beginning. So you want, you want to render it out as a PNG sequence. That way if you render it out and it fails halfway, you can always start from that point. Once that's all done, import that to Premiere. And it looks like this. It looks good so far. Then add some sound effects, some sound design, and export it out as H.264. And you get the final image, which looks like this. Well, I guess that's it for today's episode of To Be Determined. It sure is, Keanu. Make sure to tune in our next broadcast. It's our season finale. For sure, Cody. Again, we've been your hosts, and we'll see you guys next time. Stay safe and stay alert, guys. <laughs>